Fats are more than just a way to store energy in our bodies. They are essential molecules that play a crucial role in various biological processes. But how exactly does our body break down fat for energy? This process is known as fat catabolism, and it's a fascinating journey through our cellular machinery. Hello everyone, this is BioScholar. In this video, we will explore the process of fat catabolism, from its discovery to the detailed stages, and finally, its importance in our overall metabolism. To fully appreciate how we understand fat metabolism today, we need to go back to the early 19th century. During this time, a French chemist named Michel Eugène Chevreul was making groundbreaking strides in the study of fats. Chevreul's work focused on uncovering the composition and properties of various fats, laying the foundation for the future exploration of how these fats are processed in the body. Building upon the foundational knowledge established by Chevreul, the early 20th century saw a major breakthrough in understanding fat metabolism. This pivotal moment came in 1904 when German chemist Franz Knoop conducted innovative experiments that would forever change our comprehension of fat catabolism. Knoop's experiments involved feeding dogs fatty acids with specific chemical markers, allowing him to trace the metabolic journey of these fats in the body. His findings revealed that fatty acids are broken down two carbons at a time, a process now known as beta oxidation. Together, the contributions of Chevreul and Noop provided a clearer picture of how fats are not just stored, but also systematically broken down to fuel the body's energy needs. These early discoveries were crucial in forming the detailed understanding of fat metabolism that we have today. Fat catabolism primarily occurs in the mitochondria of cells. The mitochondria, often referred to as the powerhouse of the cell, are responsible for producing the energy that fuels almost all cellular processes. While fat catabolism can occur in many types of cells, it is especially active in muscle cells, including both skeletal and cardiac muscles, as well as in liver cells. Now, let's discuss the whole process. These stages outline the process through which fats are broken down and converted into energy. The first stage is lipolysis. When the body needs energy, hormones like adrenaline trigger the breakdown of stored triglycerides in fat cells into free fatty acids and glycerol, a process known as lipolysis. Hormone-sensitive lipase is a critical enzyme that catalyzes this reaction. The free fatty acids are then transported in the blood by binding to albumin and delivered to cells where they are needed. Once inside the cell, Free fatty acids are activated by coenzyme A to form fatty acyl-CoA, a reaction that occurs in the cytosol and is catalyzed by the enzyme acyl-CoA synthetase. This activation process requires ATP, highlighting the investment of energy to initiate fat catabolism. The activated fatty acyl-CoA cannot directly enter the mitochondria. Instead, it is converted into acyl carnitine by the enzyme carnitine acyltransferase 1 and then shuttled into the mitochondrial matrix by the carnitine shuttle. Once inside, acyl carnitine is converted back into fatty acyl CoA by carnitine acyltransferase 2, ready for the next stage. In the mitochondrial matrix, fatty acyl CoA undergoes beta oxidation a series of reactions that sequentially cleave two carbon units from the fatty acid chain, converting them into acetyl-CoA. The process begins with the oxidation of the fatty acyl-CoA molecule. Acyl-CoA dehydrogenase catalyzes the removal of two hydrogen atoms from the fatty acyl-CoA, creating a trans-double bond between the alpha and beta carbons the second and third carbon atoms in the chain. This oxidation step results in the formation of trans-delta-2 enoyl CoA and produces FADH2, a high-energy electron carrier that later contributes to ATP production in the electron transport chain. In the next step, the trans-delta-2 enoyl CoA is hydrated by enoyl CoA hydratase. This enzyme adds a water molecule across the double bond, converting the double bond into a hydroxyl group on the beta carbon forming L3-hydroxyacyl-CoA. This step is critical because it sets up the fatty acid for further oxidation. The hydroxyl group on the beta carbon is then oxidized to a keto group by beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase. During this oxidation step, 
NAD plus acts as the electron acceptor, and NADH is produced. NADH will later enter the electron transport chain, where it contributes to the generation of ATP. This step results in the formation of 3 ketoacyl CoA. The final step in the cycle involves the cleavage of the bond between the alpha and beta carbons by the enzyme thiolase. This reaction is known as theolysis because it involves the addition of a coenzyme a molecule. The result is the release of an acetyl-CoA molecule and the production of a shortened fatty acyl-CoA, which can re-enter the beta-oxidation cycle for further processing. The acetyl-CoA produced can then enter the citric acid cycle to be fully oxidized for energy production. Acetyl-CoA then combines with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Citrate is subsequently converted into isocitrate. From here, Isocitrate undergoes oxidation and decarboxylation to form alpha ketoglue tarot, which is then oxidized to produce succinyl CoA. Next, succinyl CoA is converted into succinate, generating GTP, which can be converted to ATP. Succinate is oxidized to fumarate, which is then hydrated to form malate. Finally, malate is oxidized to regenerate oxaloacetate, allowing the cycle to begin again. Throughout this process, the cycle produces three NADH molecules, one FADH2 molecule, and one GTP per turn, which are critical for ATP production in the electron transport chain. Electron carriers are then entered into electron transport chain and finally generate energy. I've briefly touched on the Krebs cycle in this video, but if you're interested in a more detailed explanation of both the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, simply click the i button or check out the links in the description box below. Now, getting back to the topic at hand, fat catabolism. From the complete oxidation of a single molecule of palmitic acid, which is a common fatty acid, the cell can generate up to 106 molecules of ATP. This impressive energy yield underscores the efficiency of fat as a fuel source. Before wrapping up, Let's take a moment to appreciate the importance of fat catabolism. This process is a crucial source of energy, especially during prolonged exercise, fasting, or when carbohydrate stores are low. Fat provides more energy per gram than carbohydrates or proteins, making it an incredibly efficient way to fuel the body. The ability to switch between carbohydrate and fat metabolism allows the body to adapt to varying energy demands and dietary conditions, ensuring a continuous supply of energy no matter the circumstance. In summary, fat catabolism is a multi-step process that converts stored fat into usable energy. It begins with the mobilization of fats, followed by their activation and transport into the mitochondria, and culminates in beta-oxidation and the production of ATP. Understanding fat catabolism not only highlights the complexity of our metabolic processes but also underscores the importance of maintaining a balanced diet and engaging in regular physical activity to keep our energy levels in check and promote overall health. That's it for today's video. My next video will be on the urea cycle, so stay tuned. I hope you learned something new today. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Bioscholar. I'll see you in the next video.